Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch and welcome to my channel, Health by Heather Hirsch, where we discuss all things menopause and midlife. And if this is your first time meeting me, I am the lead physician of the menopause and midlife clinic at the Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. It is my passion to improve the education and advocacy around women's health, particularly in midlife, because I strongly feel that's the area where we're lacking the most knowledge. Today I wanted to tackle a really important topic, and it's one that I've gotten asked a lot since my channel started, which is my thoughts on pellet injections. Now, there are several different kinds of hormone replacement therapy, and those three big buckets are the FDA-approved types of hormone therapy, there is compounded hormone therapy, and then this third bucket I'm kind of calling pellet injections. And where I really wanna focus this video on is really why I don't prescribe or recommend pellet injections. Now I wanna start this video by saying that my overarching theme is that not one size fits all and that all my patients have autonomy to do what they think is best for them. Of course, where there is a, a physician who is overseeing their care. So what I'm going to say is definitely my medical opinion, but again, I know that one size does not fit all. So I've alluded to the fact that I don't recommend and don't prescribe pellet injections. And there's a couple of reasons why, and I really wanna get into this so that you understand where I might be coming from if you have a different opinion, or perhaps if you are already on pellet injections. The very first reason I don't prescribe a pellet injections is because they are not FDA approved. Now, that's obvious that they're not FDA approved um, and that is why you can't get them at your local pharmacy. You can't get a pellet injection at CVS, Walgreens, or you know your grocery store. They have to be made and they have to be, uh, typically pellets injections are injected. So they have to be done at a um, physician or provider's office. When something is not FDA approved, this leads to a lack of regulation. So it being not FDA approved is problematic because these medications are not regulated. It's not regulated how they're made and it's not regulated um, in studies how their safety and efficacy. Now I'm gonna stop you right there because you may be saying, well, where I'm getting my pell injections, I'm given good data to show that these are safe but there's no way you can control any um, environment like a randomized controlled trial, which physicians and scientists consider to be the gold standard. You cannot do a randomized controlled trial or really any good trials comparing these medications either to placebo or to other medications on the market because there's no way to assure that you're getting the same thing in every round, that you're getting the same thing as the next patient because they are unregulated. So the very first problem with not being FDA approved is that they are unregulated and therefore their safety and efficacy data, this is going into point number two, their safety and efficacy data is really truly unknown. Now, I have never prescribed pellet injections, and uh, but I do see patients who have used them before and then do come to see me. And of course, I know the reason that many people do get pellet injections is because there's so much confusion about what is safe and what is unsafe in menopause when you don't feel well and you need your symptoms controlled. So of course, when you get pellet injections, you are going to be you know, given information and data that they're safe. The problem is, is that these are probably anecdotal studies. These are studies done on individuals, but they're not randomized controlled trials. They're not you know, long um, prospective studies where they're studying these things for really long term and comparing them to placebo or comparing them to um, in the, the um, current gold standard, which is an FDA approved estradiol or Premarin or what have you. So again, they're not regulated and there is no good safety and efficacy data. You know, that's one of the biggest problems is that when you're taking something that's not FDA approved and it's unregulated, how can we really tell if they're safe and effective? 
So on to point number three is that a lot of my patients who have had pellet injections in the past typically get a slew of really expensive lab work very, very often as a way to regulate and ensure that these are safe. Now, therein lies another problem is that we are definitely overdoing blood work that may be deemed unnecessary, and blood work may not always tell you if there is a problem. So we were gonna next get into what are my safety concerns with pellet injections? So my safety concerns are numerous. It's not that there's no safety concerns with FDA approved options either. Of course, with any type of medication, even something over the counter like Advil, Tylenol, there's always safety um, concerns and there's always risks with anything. But with pellet injections, they're definitely a little bit steeper. So again, here are my safety concerns with taking pellet injections. Typically what's in a pellet injection is a pretty big dose of estrogen, testosterone, and or maybe sometimes progesterone, but sometimes it's given, I see orally or in a cream. What happens is these pellet injections are given for, and they're supposed to last for three months. So they give a whopping dose that's supposed to last three months. When estrogen and progesterone are unbalanced for women who have an intact uterus, that can increase your risk for uterine hyperplasia or precancer or uterine cancer. That is, of course, horrible. We, we don't want to ever have anyone at an increased risk for uterine cancer, but when something is unregulated and its safety and efficacy in the ways to metabolize have not been studied in long-term randomized controlled trials, that is a problem that it's a risk we face when we take pellet injections. So too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. The other big safety thing I see very commonly with pellet injections is super therapeutic levels of testosterone, testosterone levels that are much, much higher than absolutely needed. Now, just a side note about testosterone, I can make a whole different video on when and why to use testosterone, but quite easy or quite simply, the main reason to use testosterone is for a boost in libido. That is its main role, it is not been shown to be to help with metabolism, energy, fatigue. It is really just to boost a woman's libido postmenopausally. That's one of the biggest reasons to use testosterone in menopause. Now, a whopping dose of testosterone is gonna make you feel really good. You're gonna feel like you can take on the world. You're gonna feel like you can, you know, climb any mountain. And, and that feels good for a short amount of time. But then typically what happens is people develop side effects of super therapeutic testosterone when those levels are way too high. What are those side effects? Well, I have seen many patients with permanent deepening of their voice. In fact, this is when people are transitioning, they take enough testosterone to lower their voice. So enough testosterone in really high doses can permanently lower your voice. And unless that's the wanted side effect, you may not be too happy about that. It can cause permanent, um, act, uh, um, so it can cause scarring. So it can cause acne that is so bad that leaves permanent scars or scars that take many years to go away on your face or on your back or other areas that are sensitive to hormones. And it can cause permanent clitoral megaly enlargement of your clitoris. Probably also a side effect that you don't want and facial hair as well. And those levels of testosterone can get really, really, really high. And again, if you think about it, you're injecting um, you know, testosterone, estrogen, plus or minus progesterone into someone's tuckish for three months. It's really hard to control those levels once you implant that pellet injection. So we talked about they're not FDA improved. Um, they haven't been studied, therefore, in long-term studies are unregulated. There's definitely concerns about the safety and efficacy. Um, it can cause a really severe and concerning um, risks such as uterine cancer and super therapeutic testosterone levels, not to mention, of course, the basic risk for the risk of blood clot, which again is something that I definitely counsel my patients on when they're taking FDA approved hormone therapy. Lastly, there is a big cost to these pellet injections. They're almost, most of the time, they're about several thousand dollars for a three month round. And that is, in my opinion, really an unnecessary financial strain when I can give you estradiol or plant-based estrogen and something that you can take your local pharmacy that is prescribed and FDA approved. So the cost is the last issue that I have with them, as well as the cost to get all these labs done and the cost even just to see the physician and the cost to, to inject it. It's, it's really not a, a sustainable long-term solution. I have many patients who take hormone therapy for years. So 
you can calculate that and it's it's astronomical so okay so i just kind of talked for about 10 minutes or so about why i don't prescribe um, pellet injections so why is it that these even exist how did they come about well in my opinion after the early studies of premarin and prempro came out in the early 2000s there was a lot of fear around prescribing fda approved hormone therapy now just like if we take out way uh woman's uh, choice little niches will form that will fill that void for women who still feel symptomatic so women were afraid to take hormone therapy perhaps um, their physicians were afraid to prescribe it uh, but some were not and so then these sort of wellness clinics or boutiques formed or maybe it's even your physician who's doing this in their office and you've seen them for a really long time but then out of that um, fear of FDA approved hormone therapy sort of became this this niche area and these sort of bioidentical uh, that word thrown around a lot pellets that are deemed safer and I really really want you to know from the bottom of my heart I've been studying this for years I definitely don't feel that these are safer but I definitely understand why women may gravitate towards this and I definitely understand if you've been on them why you have it is frustrating and it is confusing out there. It is so difficult to tell what is safe, and what is efficacious, and what you should and shouldn't be doing. So it's by no fault of anyone's that they may be on a pellet injection. There's always the time to stop and convert to FDA approved hormone therapy, which is what I recommend. Now again, FDA approved hormone therapy is not without its own risks. The biggest risk is the rare risk of a blood clot and it's lower if you use a transdermal option but these are definitely much more rigorously studied. They are definitely regulated. They are, um, and they are cost effective. So there's many, many benefits. And lastly, I just want to leave you with what does bioidentical mean? I answer this question almost all the time. Bioidentical is a slang term. It really just means that the estradiol component, the, uh, sorry, it really just means that the estrogen component is estradiol. Now that is what's used in pellet injections, but I can also give you plenty of FDA approved bioidentical estradiol options that are going to be very, very rigorously studied. They're going to be much safer in my opinion. So that is a little bit about pellet injections. I really want to leave you with, I definitely understand for any of my patients or for any of you watching, if you have done pellet injections, I do want you to feel really informed. I do definitely feel that FDA approved hormone therapy is much safer. And while I understand it's so confusing, it is by no fault of yours that you may have been on a pellet injection, but it's not too late to switch. That's all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please, if you can, like and subscribe to my channel. That lets me know you guys like this content and I will find the time to make it. I hope to have new videos out every Tuesday and Friday. Although with everything going on in the world, it's becoming a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to do my best to try and keep to that schedule. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and evening. Bye now.